Here is the 2024 Dodge Hornet RT Plus. Track pack and black top all wheel drive in gray with the black interior. This is going to get the same full electric range as the Alfa Romeo and the same platform with quick zero to 60s and it's faster than everybody in its class. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. All trims are going to have LED headlights, daytime runnings. The lower is going to look a little bit more aggressive than anyone in its class with the matte black that's going to surround the top part and lower part of the grill. This is the new face for Dodge. So when you're thinking Durango, this is a miniature version of that without a Hemi. The hood is going to be more performance driven with the gloss black elements and it's functional. And underneath the hood, two engine options in which we have the 1.3 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged with the hybrid technology combined at 288 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque paired to a six-speed automatic transmission. Going back to the Alpha, this is the same platform. You have more horsepower and torque, reaching 60 at 5.6 seconds at top speed, 128 miles per hour. That's fast considering the class that it's in with Toyota, Honda, Subaru, and Mazda. Standard is a 17 inch wheel, and then you go into the 18 by seven and a half because we have the track pack and the black top. This is a 20 inch wheel. So it's a 235 40 on all four corners. The gloss black elements for the fenders, the skirts, the side view mirror, window trim and badging is also part of that package. Standard all wheel drive across all four trims. And because of that package, we have the dual mode suspension. Four pistons is housed behind those red brake calipers in the front. Going back to the segment that it's in, even Mazda is not going to have this much performance going into a CX-50. It's not going to be there, even with that turbo charge. That's why this is a little bit more unique because it goes into classes like Alfa Romeo, even touching bases up to Maserati, in which when you start thinking about the savings, you can buy a his and her for the price of one Maserati Gracale, towing up to 2,000 pounds with a payload at 1,195 pounds, going to the 2.0 liter, which has 268 horsepower. That will give you about 50 pounds more payload. And if you think about a Porsche Macan, you go up to the T, this is gonna be faster and you got about 20 grand of savings with a similar style to the Porsche, except the lower is gonna be more aggressive with the dual exhaust outlets. The gloss black is going to take over reverse sensors and a reverse camera. You have to go up to the Porsche Macan S and then you're gonna beat it by one second and a zero to 60. But then you're going another $10,000 almost just to get something to be faster than a Dodge Hornet. Power lift gate going into 22.9 cubic feet of storage. It does sit up because of the sport exit. There isn't really any lip though, so it does make it a little bit more easy. 12 volt charger, bag holders on both sides. Underneath the floor, we have the charger with a little bit of storage. You'll lose about 4.1 cubic feet compared to the 2.0 liter for storage capacity. And that will max cargo to over 50 cubic feet of storage. We need to go inside, start this thing up so you can hear that exhaust note. Black Alcantara with the red inserts, contrast stitching. This will not option the ventilated seats that come with this trim. 10-way power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger with memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. This is gonna be one of the most sporty vehicles, which it's kind of crazy because it's under 50K. You're gonna have leatherette surfaces. It's a two-tier dash that has a 10.3 infotainment, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, dual climate control. And to go through your vehicle settings for the e-hybrid, you have the performance controls and you have the controls that will show the reverse camera, which that's what I'm showing you right now. The trajectory will expand. It doesn't cover the whole screen though. So you're getting 
a little bit less value with that. You'll just see the sensors here working into some actual buttons, which makes it a little bit more easy because I don't have to use everything through the infotainment. Push button start and the sport mode, which when you click it, hear that engine. It's just crazy. Two USB ports, a 12 volt wireless charger because of the tier we're in, leather around the shifter and the key fob for the Hornet. And on the passenger side, you have a little storage here for the door pocket, which you don't have on the driver's side. It's gonna be a little bit more cramped because this bulges out to give that driver focus setup. And even here, this bulges out more so, so leg space starts becoming a little bit compromised. And the satin aluminum will brush in between. It's gonna be more soft. It opens up into a deep storage pocket. It's just a little bit more pushed back. Leather wrap steering wheel, it's a flat bottom. This is out of the Alfa Romeo parts bin and Maserati Gracale. This would normally be where you start the vehicle and now it's your e-driving mode, which when you click, click on it, you have three different settings. So you could save the electric, you can use hybrid, or you can go full electric for up to 33 miles. It is multi-function. And the gauge cluster is a 12.3 infotainment screen that can go through an array of information. You have a total of nine different pages that you can go through here and toggle. I usually leave it on the navigation or performance. Dashboard and the door panels configure in together and you have this aluminum look that comes into play. 14 speakers through Harman Kardon and it's soft to touch. One touch up and down for all the windows, a smaller storage pocket with a auto dimming rear view mirror and a large panel moonroof. For the back seats, you sit up a little higher. So I'm pretty much hitting the headliner. I'm six foot three. Leg space, I am almost against the back of the front seats in the position I'd be sitting. Storage behind both of the front seats, air vents, USB ports, large armrests with cup holders and a little storage in between. And the door has the same segment that's found in the front. So you'll have that leatherette and soft materials, just a smaller storage pocket. Sliding into the center, it's gonna be a little bit more cramped because the rails are pushed way back so you'll be sharing a significant amount of feet space but in shoulder space isn't too bad as well as leg space for the width of the vehicle but then going back to the headroom i'm pretty much on the headliner 288 horsepower with 383 pound feet of torque zero to 60 at 5.6 seconds it's crazy what you're getting with this package in general Thinking about a BMW X1 M35, I have done a few reviews on that vehicle. That's going to be at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars more than this, and it's only 0.4 seconds quicker. So this is what I'm saying. Overall value, it's hard to really put this in a segment with the vehicles because it outclasses all the vehicles to a level of ten to fifteen thousand dollars more for what you're getting as a total package. 128 mile per hour top speed. It feels very aggressive in the interior. One thing that I dislike though is the exhaust note filters in through the speakers and it does so quite a bit. It has the same exhaust note as a Maserati Gracale, as the Alfa Romeo, and it's a huge savings from both of those variants. And it's a plug-in hybrid so you can go up to 33 miles full electric range. That's a lot of pros. We're gonna switch back to the pros and cons in just a second, so that way you can really see the steering has some weight to it also, so it keeps that dynamic feel, and just overall, just overall, it's an exciting vehicle, especially considering it's a plug-in hybrid, but that exhaust note, it's just normal. Because it's in sport mode, it likes to be a little bit more aggressive. Hitting higher RPMs, a significant, around, a significant amount of road noise filters in. The ride is a little bit more harsh because we have changed getting the track pack. The seats are a little bit more firm as well and you're not able to option the ventilated seats with this Alcantara inserts. Going to some cons about the vehicle, I would say for the everyday drive, it's gonna be a lot more harsh than people are used to for this segment. Turn radius and the performance all in one. It's tight, about two lanes, let's go.
it's a fun to drive vehicle but the exhaust because of the amount of road noise once you get up to a higher speed it is hard to hear it in which sadly i want to hear that a lot more because i'm in the rt plus another con is the infotainment screen and the actual buttons on the steering wheel the engagement is just not as quick when you change to the e-drive modes there were several times that I've had to push it multiple times to get it to get engaged. The same thing with the touch screen, so it's not as responsive, and this is the Uconnect 5. You can also achieve an extra 30 horsepower boost, which just makes this a little bit more fun because when you're going into the new X1 M35i, they have the same thing. When you click onto the battleships, you have a 10 second delay and it'll spool up the twin scroll turbo charge. Not a big fan of the 1.3 liter inline four cylinder turbocharge. But then when I'm thinking about the price, the value plus the MPGs, kind of all right with it because you're getting quick speeds, 77 miles combined. Going against Honda, they don't have anything like this. Subaru, same thing. Mazda, not even gonna have a suspension like this. Going up the tier to Lexus, not gonna be as fast. Might be a little bit more luxurious, but you're gonna be spending more money. Infinity, you're gonna have a CVT transmission. I mean, when I'm thinking a Dodge Hornet to go to this extreme level and it's under 50 grand, the package that you're getting is really good. Putting it back to sport and look at this. Some other cons is the reverse camera. It doesn't cover up the whole screen. And I'm not a huge fan of these screens that come out of the dash. I understand this is not a Maserati, so you're not going to configure it that way. And I know in the comments, people are gonna say, well, you're comparing this against a Porsche, an Alfa Romeo, and all these expensive cars. That's because of what you're getting as performance. The big problem that I have is because of the segment it's in, it's a harsh ride for the everyday. It's very noisy. Because we have optioned to get the track pack, we don't get the ventilated seats. And when I'm going to this tier, even if I option a more sporty seat, I would like to at least get that, plus manual cushion extensions as, at least, because the seats, they're not that long. So for taller people, it does make it a little bit less comfortable for a long ride. And then the same thing in the center here, this armrest becomes an elbow rest if you're shorter. I do like that we're getting out of the parts bin from Maserati Alfa Romeo, the steering wheel and a lot of the components plus the platform itself. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Furman Dodge of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT Plus for our car review.